So in this session, we are going to see what is um, a webhook and what we can do with webhooks in order to get notified. Now, before to start, of course, let me uh, express my huge thanks to the sponsor of this event to make to make it possible. It's great to be here and share knowledge with other and follow also other cool sessions. Few words about myself. I am Giuliano De Luca, an independent technical architect. I have been awarded uh, as Microsoft MVP since uh, five years in a row right now. And um, in the last year, I got a second award for another category, which is uh, M365 Apps and Services and for M365 Development. Here you can find my Twitter handle if you want to stay connected with me, feel free. And um, very important, there is my YouTube channel here. Uh, I posted uh, more than 300 videos on my YouTube channel and um, I hope that you can uh, give it a try and maybe you can find some, some content useful for you. It's aimed at, uh, at uh, developer, IT pro and end users. It's basically for everybody and um, the focus is Microsoft 365 and Azure. So let's move now with the agenda of this session. We are going to explore webhooks. The, we are going to have a look uh, to all capabilities, what we can do with webhooks. And uh, finally, we are going to enjoy three demos and then we are going to wrap up the session. So let's start to talk about the core of this, uh, the core topic of this session, which is webhooks. I'm going to focus on Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Graph API and SharePoint related to, to the webhooks. So first of all, what are webhooks? Webhooks, it's a fantastic way to get notified. In the second uh, point of this ballot list, we can see a very important thing. We were in the past used always to build something. And in order to see if the content was refreshed or no or not, we were used to query a source. Now I'm not specifically talking about of technologies, databases, or just a source. We were used to work in this way because there was no chance to get notified when the content was refreshed or was updated. Then the idea was to build a model that was based on a pool model. So I have something that run every 10 minutes, for example, and check the data source if something has been changed. Now with webhooks, we can completely rethink about that and deal with a revolutionary way to get notified on changes. This means that when something changed in a, in a data source, I'm talking about, for example, a SharePoint news is edited and changed by the user or just a SharePoint list or just um, something in a team. Let's say that a user changed the privacy of a, of a team, switching from private to public, or other other things in Microsoft 365. Every time that this change happen, with webhook we can get notified. Where we get notified, this is up to us. We have to provide basically a URL where we want to get notified. When I change something, Microsoft 365, Microsoft Graph or the SharePoint webhook send to the URL that we have identified and that we have selected, send an, a notification to our service. A JSON payload comes to our service. It's then it's just a matter of check the, the JSON payload, see what resources has been changed, and then inform the user that something is changed. This incredible way to get notified this kind of approach has been adopted um, previously from uh, wordpress github and mailchimp now there are many other services that 
are using uh, always more this, this approach and this method. It was first made available in OneDrive and then Outlook. And now we can use webhooks in SharePoint Online and Graph API. When I talk about Graph API, I mean uh, the entire Microsoft uh, 365 um, suite, then OneDrive, SharePoint, Outlook, Teams, and all other services. Now let's let's check together the, the first demo. In this demo, I'll show you when I change something in a team, for example, I'm going to change the privacy of a team, and I show you that I will I will get notified that someone, a user, has changed this parameter, this privacy, to a specific team. Now, let me open uh, Visual Studio. So I'm going to stop the presentation and I'm going to open now Visual Studio Code. I'm a user to work in this way when I, when I work with API. I always work with um, Visual uh, Studio Code because it's one of the most used tool. And I like to stay always uh, focused with the same tool as much as I can. So for this case, um, I have several um, several files here, and for every files, I can uh, consume the graph API, and I can see how many subscription uh, for webhooks I have up and running. So for example, I already grabbed a valid token, which will allow me to um, to consume the graph API. If you like this this way to consume the graph API. You can check a video that I have on my YouTube channel where I explain how you can set up this uh, extension in Visual Studio Code that will then allow you to play with the Graph API. Now that I click it on the link send request, I can see the response on the right. So here I can see that I subscribed to a webhook twice. I have one subscription up and running with this ID for groups. So this means that in my tenant, every user, it doesn't matter which, change something in a Microsoft 365 group that, that could be directly in Outlook, that could be in Teams, because behind, behind a team there is an Office 365 group, or better, now it's called Microsoft 365, no more Office 365 than Microsoft 365 group. And then the infrastructure, Microsoft, Microsoft Graph API will send me a notification to this URL that I provided. What is this URL? It's basically an Azure function that is running on my Azure environment. Let me open the browser and let me show you the, the Azure function. This is the Azure function that is running, up and running. It's called the Microsoft 365 Group Guest Guests. Now, as you can see, I triggered previously this Azure function. And uh, in uh, here, I have one function called uh, Microsoft 365 Groups. And uh, this, uh, this Azure function has this, exactly this URL that I use it to subscribe to the webhook. How, how I can subscribe to a webhook? So first of all, let me show you I'm going to delete this subscription and I'm going to create a new one. So let me use this delete um, request. I'm going to pass the now the GUID that I copied before so I can delete this subscription. Now, if I click on send request and executing uh, this delete request and using this endpoint subscription and then the GUID, I got now um, an HTTP status 204. It means that now the subscription should be deleted. Let me send and again this uh, get request to see how many subscription I have up and running. Now I can see that I have just this one. I have just one before I had two. This is another subscription. Now let me subscribe again to the to the webhook for groups. So 
This is the way that you can use to subscribe to our book. Using this endpoint, making a post towards this endpoint and adding in the header content type application JSON and then this payload in the body, you are able to say that you want to get notified every time that a user changes something in the Microsoft 365 groups and for which kind of change it's an update. So you want to get notified every time that the user change the title of a Microsoft 365 group, the description or the privacy or other other things. But of course, in the change type, you can also get got notified when uh, the, the group is deleted or when a new Office 365 group is created and so on. In this case, I want to get notified only when the Microsoft 365 group is changed. Now let me click on send request. I have now an HTTP status created and this is the response. This is a recap of my subscription. I have the ID here and uh, I have the resource and I'm going to get notified every time that the user change something in a group. Now, other things to have a look are the expiration daytime. In Microsoft, in Microsoft Graph API, there is a time range which is uh, three days. And when you reach the, the, the expiration daytime, it's up to you to renew the subscription of the, otherwise this is deleted. In SharePoint, you have maximum six months if you subscribe to a web book in SharePoint. For Microsoft Graph API, the, it's different because as you can imagine, the API are worldwide accessible and available and Microsoft has to take care about the infrastructure. If something is not used from the user, um, of course, Microsoft has to optimize the, the consumed resources and this is a way to do it. Um, but if you build a a trigger, a time trigger, let's say you can build an Azure, an Azure function, for example, a time trigger or a power automate flow or a logic app that run every X time and check if the expiration date of the subscription is coming and then renew the subscription. If you have something, uh, but we are going to, to have a look later in the, in the slide deck. If you have something like that, you are able to to have always the subscription up and running so you can always get notified. Now let's see in um, uh, what to do. So let me show you the demo. I'm going now to this uh, specific uh, team called guests and here I'm going now to edit this team and I'm going to change the privacy. I'm going to switch to public and then I'm going to click on done. Now, Microsoft um, 365 will uh, send me a notification to the Azure function telling me that someone has changed the something in the group guests. The information that is sent is absolutely um, secure. There are no clear um, information about the change. So Microsoft tell you that something has been changed in the team guests. Then you have to figure out what has been changed. Um, so this is, uh, as you can imagine, absolutely important because um, there are no sensitivity information sent uh, through HTTP requests. So this is absolutely important to keep in mind. So now that I changed this thing, I should receive uh, in a moment um, an email. I made previously a test. I changed, for example, the privacy. I'm going uh, to change also the privacy of this other team. Product X launch. Let me edit the team and let me set uh, the public preview also for this team. So um, now let me go back here. I got now an email 
this is another email I'm going to show you later. So as you can see here, I have I got an email. They're owners of team guests. Your change of privacy setting from private to public is not permitted due to our company policy. The setting has therefore been rest restored to private. And I got another notification because I changed the privacy also for this other team. Product is launch. So this is pretty cool because in uh, I would say in uh, real time you get notified when something has been changed. Now, of course, you have sensitivity labels that will allow you to deny to the user to change the privacy of a group if you want. But this is just a demo to show you uh, how powerful is a webhook and how you can trigger your service to uh, to do something and to react to a change. So now let me uh, just show you the the code of the of the Azure function. This is the Azure function that I deployed. So uh, it's very important to keep in mind that um, you have to deal with a validation token. I will show you later in the slides how you can uh, better subscribe to a, a subscription and then how you can provide a response. So the first time that you subscribe to, to the webhook, Microsoft send you a validation token and you have to use this validation token to send back as a, as a plain text in the response. Uh, in this way, Microsoft is able to figure out that your, uh, your service is up and running, it's, it's healthy, and uh, uh, then Microsoft start to create the subscription and then start to notify your service when something has been changed. Now, assuming that we have already done this, uh, what I'm going to do here is basically uh, parsing the, the request body that comes from Microsoft. Then I uh, deserialize the content and then I start to, to deal with the array because Microsoft sent you um, an array, a JSON with the array of all things changed because if you are in a company where there are thousands of users, it's possible that uh, other users are updating a Microsoft 365 group at the same time. So then in this case, you are going to get one notification with the array of three, four, five, six groups that have been changed. <clears throat> then here, I know that um, I'm getting a, a notification for a, a group change. Then I'm going to figure out if um, the the privacy. I'm I'm specifically checking here if for the current group the visibility has been changed. But it's up to you to to check the the specific things that you want to avoid that user deal with or other other things but in these specific things i'm going to check if the visibility has been changed if yes and if the user has changed the the, the visibility in public then i send a, an email to the user notifying him that this is not allowed and then i'm going to set back the privacy to private in fact if i open microsoft teams and if i open the team that we have seen before, guests, let me open this in edit. This is still um, in public. Let me check this other one. Edit team. I have the privacy set back to private. <clears throat> now, um, yeah, so basically this is how it, how it works, this Azure function. So you can also um, deal with um, users if the um, uh, owner of a team has added uh, a specific user in the team or so there are many, many scenarios, but th this is not really important right now. Important is to focus on this um, way to get notified on a change. Okay, we have seen now this uh, first demo with the Azure function. 
what I would like to show you is reopening again my Visual Studio code and uh, executing again the list subscription get request. I'm going to show you that I have another subscription up and running. And uh, here, what I have is another um, subscription up and running, but here in the resource, what I have, it's not a groups generic. In this specific case, I want to get notified when only one group has been changed. It is this group with this GUID. I can figure out by running uh, another request that I have here. This is the GUID of my group. I can see which group I'm talking about. It is this one. So now I have, I can remove, uh, let me create another request here. I don't want to delete this one. Okay, so now I can delete the select or data query that I added. I'm going to re-execute this. So I, I'm getting more information here. Now here um, I'm talking about of the group training, call it the training Microsoft 365. So there should be here, it is the visibility to private. There are information related with this. Uh, this is a team. You can see also here there is a creation option and there is this uh, property team. This means that this Microsoft 365 group has a team connected and the team is training. Now going back here on the team, we can see that the this is the, the team. Now here I have this subscription. Let me execute again this list subscription. And what I have here is this uh, training group. When someone changed something in this group, then uh, the Microsoft Graph API should send me a webhook to this uh, URL. This time I have a different URL and the URL that I have, it's um, a Power Automate flow. Now, I don't want to touch the hot topic uh, of licensing. Um, as you can see here, I have this nice icon that's, that tell me that for uh, this flow that I'm using, I need a premium license because um, for this flow, I use an HTTP trigger um, connector. It is this one, and this is the URL that I use to subscribe to the webhook. You can use if you have problem with license. License if you don't have a premium license, you can use a Logic App in Azure. Uh, but this is the way um, that you can follow to get notified if you change something. Now, before to have a look to this uh, Power Automate flow, which is very basic and simple, I'm going to change again. Uh, something here in this uh, in this team. This time, I'm going to change. I'm going to edit the team, and here I'm going to add something in the description. Training M365. I added Philly, and now I'm going to click on done. Now, something uh, is uh, changed in my in my team, of course, and <clears throat> this should trigger my Power Automate flow. Let me go on my specific is um, so 18 seconds ago. So it could be uh, possibly this this one. But let me select again. <clears throat> let me target again the edit button. I'll show you um, this basic uh, flow. What I have here is just a check if there there's something in the body if the body is not empty. So if Microsoft is uh, sending something and then I'm going to send an email uh, to this user by telling him that the something has been changed in the group training and then I'm going to add the the body, the payload that Microsoft sent me. So of course, it's just to simplify this demo. I'm going to send this uh, with the with an email, but you have to work much more here. You have to maybe uh, 
add a better message here in the mail by telling uh, to the user that the description has been changed or uh, any other kind of thing in the Microsoft 365 group. Now, I can see that um, email are coming uh, because something has been changed in the in the training uh, in the training uh, group and this is the payload that i received so as you can see the um, i don't have information sensitive information here microsoft tell me only that an update has been made for this group uh, and this will allow me to get uh, using the graph api exactly to get uh, this resource and reuse it to query this group and check and figure out what has been changed. So it is extremely secure. And then you have every time that Microsoft send you uh, a JSON, you have the subscription expiration date time. This is very important. So in this way, you are able to check in if the subscription is is coming to um, to an end. If is going to expire in this way with another process that run every X time you can renew the subscription. So now that we have seen this demo, we have covered basically um, the dev world and the citizen developer world. So consuming a graph API, it's not so difficult. Um, there are also good documentation and it's not really necessary to be ultra uh, skilled under an, uh, a technical perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, uh, I would say it's also possible for a citizen developer use this kind of approach with Power Automate Flow and Logic Apps and get notified and trigger your process when something has been changed. Now, let's go back to my uh, slide deck. Now I'm going to speed up because I spent uh, a lot of time of this on this demo. So in practice, let's see how you can subscribe to a webbook. We have already seen this, but um, let's see now uh, more important things to to have a look. For example, if you want to get um, if you want to subscribe to SharePoint to a SharePoint webbook, not uh, to Graph, but you can do it to, for example, to a SharePoint webbook. And you can then get notified for a list, for example. If you have a very important list in SharePoint, you can get notified when someone uh, add a new item, change an item in the list, or delete the item. So you can trigger uh, your uh, your process and do uh, whatever you want to do. This is the way to uh, subscribe to a to make a subscription to a webbook in uh, in SharePoint. These are the information that you have to provide. There is, as I mentioned before, a maximum of six months expiration period. So in SharePoint, you have more time. Then when you send the request to um, start and to create a webbook subscription, Microsoft send you um, a validation token and you have to provide a response to the uh, post that Microsoft send to the to your service. That could be an Azure function, a Power Automate flow, or a Logic App. And in uh, the content type should be a text plane. So you have to provide a response in text plane and by providing the random string, the validation token that Microsoft send you. You have five seconds. And if you do this in five seconds, then the subscription is created. You get another response from Microsoft, um, which um, will tell you that the status is 201 created. The, sub the subscription is created. You have the ID of your webbook subscription. You have the expiration date time. You have the notification URL, which uh, should be the, the URL of your service, and then the resource. Then what happens next? Next, when you change something in a SharePoint list, in a Microsoft 365 group, or in a in, in the Azure Active Directory, if an admin changed something uh, in, um, in the user entity, for example, add a, a parameter in a, for a user. So then 
Microsoft send you a webhook, notify this to, to your uh, service, and what you get is this uh, JSON payload. You get uh, an array um, with some information, the subscription ID, the expiration date time. The client state is important, so when you subscribe to, the, to a webhook, you have to provide the client state, and here you have to add your secret word, let's say, uh, could be a password, could be a GUID, it's up to you, but this uh, helps your service to figure out that the, the, the post it, it's coming from Microsoft, it's a webhooks, and it is not it is not another service that is trying to um, to reach your your service. The expiration daytime is in the service, so it means um, what kind of thing has been changed. In this case, if it's a SharePoint list, you are going in the resource to have the GUID of the list of the SharePoint list, so you can uh, then uh, query the SharePoint list and see what has been changed. The tenant ID, the site URL, in this case, it is the home site, it is the root site collection of my SharePoint tenant, and then the web ID. So let me have an eye of the time. And then the even notification. So every time that you your service get notified because something has been changed, you have always five seconds of time to get to send a response back to Microsoft with the uh, HTTP status 200. OK, if you do this immediately, then um, the subscription still um, um, continue. Otherwise, there is um, a mechanism that we are going to have a look later. Now, let's see um, for wha what kind of uh, resources you can get notified. You can get notified for security alert in, uh, in your Microsoft 365 tenant, for example, for Teams call record. Uh, it means that any user in your organization that start to record a call in Teams this will uh, uh, send a webhook to your service telling you that uh, in, in, a, in a team meeting has been started the record, then you have to figure out which user has started the recording, and then this could also be useful if you want to provide a feedback, an automatic feedback form to the, to the meeting. So in the team meeting chat, for example, you can send a URL uh, remembering the user to uh, fill out the feedback form or any other kind of thing that you want to highlight during the meeting. Then the chat message. This is also uh, cool. So if uh, some someone in the organization start to type something in the chat message, you can get notified across webhooks. And here you have a very um, um, little range of expiration it is just one hour because as you can imagine worldwide how many chat in teams i don't know but i think are millions of people and um, of course if um, your service is not up and running microsoft has to drop the subscription for the webhook in this way can uh, uh, maintain a high quality of the infrastructure then group conversation onedrive if um, there, are, there is a change in OneDrive. If you upload a file, if you modify a file, or if you delete a file, SharePoint list, absolutely important. Document library as well. Outlook message, event contact, user groups, and other directory resources, printer, and so on. Now, let's see another demo. Uh, this, uh, this would be very quick, I promise you. So, let me jump now on my home site. Here I am on my home site in SharePoint. And what I have here on the right is Viva Connections. If you are not familiar with that, it's a dashboard uh, which is available in the in every device. So it's um, it's available in desktop, tablet, and mobile version of um, of, um, of SharePoint. It means that if you open uh, Microsoft Teams, you have an app called the Viva Connections. You can open Viva Connection and then you will see exactly um, this dashboard with these tiles. Now, here I have um, this 
this uh, adaptive card. So this is called an adaptive card. And here I have several notification. So what I'm going to do right now is opening another browser instance with another user called Diego Siciliani. And <clears throat> what I'm going to do here, so first of all, let me open the tool uh, bar, the dev toolbar here in my browser. And what I would like to show you is that I have this thing. Let me make a refresh so we can <clears throat> see better if this thing is up and running. Um, so as you can see here, I have this row that tell me that something is connected. The adaptive card is now connected to the to the web webbook of the of the SharePoint document library. Which document library? It is the site pages. This because I want to get notified if someone has changed something in the home site, in the not in the site pages. Sorry, it is the documents documents shared documents. Let me go and site contents and documents. So what I'm going to do right now, just to be sure that it is really documents, I'm going to open now the Viva Connections dashboard. And sorry, I have to be sure that this is the one. I'm going to edit now this adaptive card and I want to see that um, I'm getting notified, yes, for documents. So every Every time that a user change something uh, in the documents of this home site, this should trigger the webbook and send me the notification. Just let me check if the adaptive card is connected to the webbook, otherwise we are not seeing uh, the notification uh, refreshing and coming. Yes, it's connected now. So let me see now going uh, opening uh, this other browser instance i'm connected as diego siciliani right now i'm going to change something and uh, in documents uh, what i'm going to change if let me select uh, let me select this one for example i'm going to the details panel and here i'm going now to add a title for this file pdf Test M365 Philly. Now, this thing has been uh, saved. Ah, sorry, this is the global HR. It's not the home site. Let me open the home site. Okay. Now I have to go in the in the documents of this home site, site contents, and then documents. Yes, so now uh, playing always with this. Uh, let me select uh, one presentation that I have. I can use maybe this other one. Yeah. So in this docx, I'm going now to add something. Philly. OK, now it's saved. And uh, <clears throat> If I have luck, I should see a notification here uh, coming without refreshing the, the browser. So let me also change uh, in, in the meantime some other thing. I'm going to add, oh, as you can see, I got, I got already a notification. Um, something has been changed and I am here connected as Giuliano. This is pretty cool. Without refreshing the page using the webbook mechanism, you can uh, refresh only a little portion of the UI and it's pretty cool. So clicking here now on this adaptive card, I can see that Diego Siciliani has changed this um, something in this document, has edited this uh, shoes.docx document. Pretty cool. I can clear all and now I have no notification. A nice way how you can uh, um, use webbooks um, in um, in the real life in uh, SharePoint Online, for example. But this could be also a custom uh, web application. Could be I don't know uh, any other kind of um, 
application. Now let me open again PowerPoint and let's move with the next slide. In SharePoint, the supported events are this uh, this one uh, for the SharePoint document library and lists that we have seen before. Um, I can get notified when a user add something in the list, deletes an item, update an item, add an attachment, or delete an attachment, check in, check out, uncheck out, file move, file convert, or even if delete a version um, of a file. This is also important because if you don't want to uh, delete the version history of a file, then this is another way to uh, notify your service and the service um, can restore the deleter, the deleted version of the file. Now, supported Microsoft Graph webbooks are Outlook message, Outlook event, Outlook personal contact, user groups, group conversation, um, OneDrive, if a user change something in a OneDrive, OneDrive for business, of course, the chat message of Teams we have seen, um, the security alert and SharePoint lists. Microsoft is adding uh, these um, more resources um, with webbooks. What are the advantages and benefits using the webbooks? So webbooks have an, a retry, retry mechanism. We have seen before that you have to provide in five seconds a response to, to Microsoft. And if this doesn't happen, maybe your Power Automate flow is disabled for any kind of reason, or your Azure function is down. I don't know for what kind of reason. Maybe a, a disaster is happening. There is a tornado in, in the data center was, where is deployed the, the Azure function. Um, then uh, Microsoft try to send the same uh, uh, JSON, the same webhook to your service five times with an interval of five minutes. This because if you have a short uh, down period of your service, the, this should not compromise the subscription, the web, webhook subscription. If your, your service is down for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, then this doesn't impact the subscription. It's still up and running. When your service will be run again, another webhook will, will be sent. The same webhook will be sent from Microsoft to your service. So then you can still continue to work uh, with this mechanism. Webhooks are secure. There's no sensitive information sent um, through the through in the webbook, so in the JSON payload, there are no information related to the, to the name of the user or to the things that has been changed. It, the webbooks contains just the information needed to your service to figure out what has been changed. Where books are easier to consume, um, it, I think this could be done uh, also from non-developers, and uh, it is a um, HTTP service, it is not a WCF base endpoints, and it is a modern way to, uh, to get notified. Now, I would like to add uh, also the Azure event apps. This is another option that you have. Instead of um, getting uh, the webhook directly in a Power Automate flow or in an Azure function, what you can do is create an event hub in Azure and uh, then provide the URL of this um, event hub uh, to Microsoft in order to create the subscription, the webbook subscription, and then your event hub will start to collect all notification. Why event hub? Because this provides additional uh, benefits remove the need for a publicly uh, publicly expose a notification URL because the URL theoretically could be accessed also by other services. If you use an Azure function or a Power Automate flow HTTP trigger, for example, of course you can uh, um, follow the security um, 
best practices in the um, Azure function uh, HTTP trigger. You can use the code uh, to append in your URL. So in this way, you are sure that uh, your uh, Azure function is invoked only when the request comes with the, the token that you provide. But the event app provides additional uh, security uh, capability. Now, <clears throat> Um, you can also temporize the change notification if you want to put uh, offline for some minutes for maintenance your event hub or your service, you can use this approach. The, the side effect of using the event hub, hub is, of course, that you have to pay for that in, uh, in Azure. Now, how you can um, renew an existing subscription? So assuming that you have um, a subscription up and running, you can follow two patterns. The, the first one is the, the not the coolest because you should manually check the expiration date by querying the subscription and check if the, the expiration date is near. If yes, then always manually in Visual Studio Code, you can um, invoke the the right endpoint to extend the expiration date for additional uh, three days in uh, if you are consuming a webhooks, uh, a Microsoft Graph API webhooks, or extend of uh, six additional months in uh, for our web, SharePoint webhooks, and so on. Or better, you can have a um, background mechanism that run every X minutes query all your subscription, check one by one if the expiration date is near. If yes, you can then uh, execute another uh, post request to renew the subscription. So in this way, it's done automatically. You don't need to take care and uh, your subscription uh, will be always up and running. Now, before to um, enough talk, I think, um, before to wrap up the session, I want to show you the last demo. In this last demo, what I'm going to do here is working with always with this team. I'm going to add a member. Um, I'm going to add uh, my private email here. Uh, let me add also another one. Using always webhooks, what you can do here is, for example, get notified when a user add a guest in a team or share a file in a SharePoint or OneDrive. Now that I have done this, let me hold, open um, an app that I have here. So this is an application called Gooms. It, it is a guest user uh, management system and uh, provides a personal dashboard for every user and the user can uh, can see how many uh, guests uh, as invited in uh, Teams or SharePoint. In this case, I shared um, a file uh, with this user. Then I can take an action. I can rebook access to the guest or I can uh, renew the, uh, for example, the collaboration. I can confirm the collaboration and other things. So this is not important right now, um, but I would like to focus on the fact that you can uh, use this technology um, to even for this uh, for this scenario. OK, so now in the meantime that I'm waiting that something comes um, here because I invited a couple of guests in uh, my team. Um, I can start to wrap up the, the session. So I'm going to <clears throat> to post in the window chat the URL of my YouTube channel. So then in this way you can have a look. Um, and um, yeah, and if you find useful content, then you can um, subscribe. The chat is, uh, is disabled. Maybe I can add it as a, as a question. OK. <clears throat> So you can find also additional resources here um, about uh, the topic that we discussed today in this session. Uh, for example, the Graph API, you can uh, 
take a screenshot or you can uh, make a photo if you want so you have the important uh, uh, references that you you need to wear um, off in order to go deeper with this topic. Then here uh, in the next slide, I have the um, feedback form. This is for me. It's not uh, related with the organizer of this event. This will be the next slide, but um, it's very useful for me to know if you really enjoyed the session, if I can do something to improve the session, or um, or I don't know any other kind of think user useful to improve the quality of my session. It takes really seconds. It's just a couple of questions. It's great if you could uh, send your feedback. Use the this URL or scan the QR code to open the the form. Then let's move with the next slide, and this is the the organizer feedback the conference feedback this is also absolutely important please have a look on it and provides your your feedback about the conference speakers if you enjoy the um, the the conference if you have tips how to improve um, the comp the conference this is absolutely important for the future and then there is a nice raffle that you have to follow <clears throat> stay tuned so you can have more information here uh, by scanning the QR code or following the link here. You can try to win uh, uh, cool stuff. And uh, again, here there is another chance to um, to win uh, something cool, uh, cool stuff like uh, an Amazon gift card, or you can get a um, free version of this. Um, of these uh, of this book. So I think that's all uh, from my side. And uh, let me just see if something uh, is arrived. Um, now this is the notification of the translation. Yeah, it's taking uh, uh, more time right now because I'm using uh, um, the web book. Um, um, which are called the management API. So this is more specific for guests. It takes <clears throat> a little bit more time minutes, but now it's refreshed. As you can see, I have this information in real time without the refreshing the page. Um, I can see that um, I have invited this user in the team guests. Maybe I can make it a little bit bigger. bigger. It's easy. And yeah, now I can take an action, for example. So this is another useful scenario that demonstrate how you can take advantage using webbooks. OK, so the session is end. I hope that you can uh, enjoy the rest of the day. There are cool sessions and uh, yeah, I hope to to see you next time.